what's up you guys so i'm here with another video today and i'm here to talk to you guys about the frog takeover i mean frogs are everywhere you guys i haven't seen this many frogs since frog ftk like for real when frog ftk was like the best deck in Yu Gi Oh and mass driver substitute swap frog they just they killed you it was crazy um, I'm not talking just about, you know, just regular frogs. I'm not talking about when frog monarchs were a thing. I'm talking about right now, and it's all because of this totally awesome tree toad guy that, you know, they still call it tree toad, thank God. Um, this card pretty much brought frogs back to life from the deep abyss, I guess we want to call it. Um, the deck has, has many forms right now. It's being used in several decks. Mermails have topped with it. Paleozoics, as you see, and um, what is it? The the Hero Tree Toad deck. Those are just the main ones to talk about. Now, what is really cool about this is that it's bringing back monsters that haven't been used in a really long time. Since Frog Monarchs, we have not used Swap Frog, Rodent Toad, and Dupar. We haven't used any of these cards. Now, with the release of Totally Awesome Tree Toad, whatever you want to call it, these cards are now playable again. Swap Frog is getting the ultimate treatment, and... Uh, Dupe Frog is getting the super treatment. I think that's just awesome. They're finally, you know, bringing back old cards. And, uh, you know, even if you don't get the hollow versions, these cards are very easy to pick up. Swap Frogs, Dupe Frogs, Rotten Tones, etc. Very easy to pick up. However, I know Tree Toad, unfortunately, does have a quite steep price. But, you know, there will be more printings of it as we know when the special editions come out. And hopefully it'll just be easier to get. Uh, but the things I want to talk about, I just wanted to focus on those three decks today. So I'm going to start with just um, the Mermail deck. I don't like mermails. It, it's a known fact. I respect the deck completely. I just, I have the worst mermail matchup in the world. It just, I always lose to the deck. It's just, it's a personal thing. Nothing against any mermail players. I played the deck, you know, for the record, I played the deck back in the beginning when it first came out, and uh, Moulin Glacia was the freaking tits. It's still the tits. It was, it was just crazy. But uh, mermails are able to play it. They're able to go Bahamut Shark into this. Just makes their turn one even better. They don't like going first. When they do go first, they start with a tree toad and you know Bahamut shark, or they could combo in to have two tree toads, two Bahamut sharks, and that's pretty ridiculous. Plus, if they don't do that and they go second, they could just kill you. So that's pretty cool. That's all I'm gonna say about that deck. It topped ARG Atlanta. Um, I watched a profile by the card guys. It was awesome. Shout out to you guys. Um, yeah. So Mermails being able to completely abuse tree toad, crazy with Bahamut shark. I mean, it's it's just awesome. So. Uh, nothing really to say about that. Uh, the next deck I want to talk about is the Paleozoic deck. I actually really like this deck. I like how this deck is designed. I know it's weird. A lot of people don't like the deck. They say it's garbage. I actually really like it. I like the idea of a deck being all traps. I think it's crazy. Um, these are just the main ones um, I just wanted to highlight. I know people have built the deck. I don't actually have the deck built in real life. I don't have tree toads or anything like that, but I just thought it was pretty cool. You have, you know, all these different Paleozoics. You have one that, um, you know, they all come out at 1,200 attack, all level 2, so they all help to make Tree Toad. Basically, you just, you know, this is your D-Draw, this is your Karma Cut, this is your um, Foolish Burial, and this is your, um, what is it, it's your Book of Moon, and I know there's an MST somewhere. There's an MST one that I missed. Let's see if I, I don't remember, Paleozoic, can't really spell. Let's see, there was one that, um, there was one I know that uh, destroys Spell and Traps. Let me just add it real quick. I think it was this one. Yeah, 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 this is the one. Did I forget it already? I guess I did. I guess I, oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, I did. I did put it there. Yeah, the MST. I'm ignorant. Anyways, um, so yeah, so that was the thing is that uh, this deck's really, really cool. It's, uh, there were two that topped the ARG in Atlanta, and I thought it was really cool just the way they played the deck because... You know, whenever you spring a trap, you know, they activate from the grave, summoning themselves. So you can play cards like Threatening Roar, Reckless Greed, anything that you needed to just further your game state or, you know, prevent you from dying. And then you just spring one of these guys, bring out another one, and, you know, you just make totally awesome. And, I mean, it literally is totally awesome. So, I mean, I think it's pretty crazy. Um, I think this deck has a lot of potential. They're playing cards like Curry Bandit to load their graveyard with traps. Um, I just think it's really, really cool that um, a deck like this is getting, uh, you know, getting some spotlight. And it's definitely nice to see, you know, because of one card's release, like I said, old cards are coming back. And now Paleozoics really get to be played at a much more competitive level because of this card. People were trying Paleozoics before, and they were good. They were good. Don't get me wrong. They were good, but they were just not that good. Now, a lot of people may argue with me and say the deck is garbage. You just Royal Decree him. I mean, that's true, but I mean... What if trap decks always, you know, struggled against Royal Decree? And, I mean, people haven't been citing Decree as much. They've been citing, you know, for Demise decks, they were citing Full House. They were citing Twin Twisters. So, um, you know, Twin Twisters doesn't really do anything to these cards. I mean, it's pretty crazy. But 
I think uh, we're definitely going to see a rise in Paleozoics because you can just pick up all the traps and stuff. But like commons, all this stuff is like basically commons. The only thing you have to invest in is the tree toads, and I mean that's not terrible for a deck considering if your budget is like 200 or less, it's not terrible. Um, I think it's pretty cool that you can play a deck like this. And, I mean, it really does throw the opponent off. I mean, you set five, and it's like, uh, what do I do? And then you just start springing traps on them, and then you just make tree uh, tree toads, and you just win the game. Plus, these other guys are pretty cool. This one lets you activate traps from the hand, and this one, um, it's unaffected by other monster effects. If a trap card is sent from your spell or trap in the graveyard, you can activate the top. You can, oh, you uh, excavate the top card, and if it's a trap card, add it to your hand. That's pretty cool. Otherwise, you send it to the grave, so basically they're all traps, so you just add it to your hand. Basically, you just add it to your hand. I think that's crazy. And uh, once per turn, if, uh, if this card has a trap card as XYZ material, you detach one from this card, target one card on the field, destroy it. I think that's pretty cool. Getting rid of a problematic card, plus being able to you know add a potential trap card to your hand, I think is awesome. So um, overall, I think Paleozoics definitely have a, you know, a chance uh, to do well the rest of this format. And lastly, I'm going to talk about uh, the Hero Tree Toad deck. So basically... Only difference with this deck is you're playing, um, what is it, Tin Goldfish, and basically every, nothing really changes except that you're slapping a, a Tree Toad next to a Dark Law, and that's that's some that's a tough field, man. Like Dark Law alone can win a lot of games, but when you got a totally awesome next to it with some back row, like, whoo, it, it is not, it is not, it is not fun at all. So. I think it's really interesting what the release of Tree Toad really has done. A lot of people look at it as something negative. I look at it as something positive because I like the idea that we have more decks. I even said I actually don't mind this format. I feel there's a lot of decks. Everyone's like, oh no, it's all ABC, all ABC. That's not always true. I mean, as we saw in Liverpool, there was ABC but Burning Abyss one because they play cards like Cherries and Chaos Hunter in the main deck. I mean, it's just... You just really adapt your deck to play against ABC and other decks, and I feel like this is these are decks people are sleeping on. People are not remembering that Tree Toad is not only for Mermails, it's not only for heroes, but it you know Paleozoics are a deck, and vice versa. People may think, oh, it's only Paleozoics, whatever. I just decree them and I win. Well, decree ain't gonna do nothing against Mermails. Degree might semi hurt Dark Law, but when they're just going Dark Law Tree Toad, I mean, come on, like it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, I've seen boards of Tree Toad, Dark Law, Rafflesia, and I mean, it's like, yo, what do you do? You you have no plays. So, I think it's really interesting uh, what the release of Tree Toad has done, and I think it's healthy for the game. And that's just my personal opinion. I feel that frogs are definitely you know making a splash back in the game and i think it's awesome so that's my personal opinions let me know what you guys think do you guys like the fact that frogs are back that frogs are starting to take over again uh we do know abc is still the dominant deck we still know it's the better deck we we know all this but it's nice to highlight other stuff besides abcs because i mean it gets kind of boring after a while if, if all you're focusing on is one deck and i mean there's not much innovation in the deck unless you're playing hand traps you're not playing hand traps if you're maining galaxy soldiers you're not maining galaxy soldiers there's not a lot of innovation, so I felt that bringing something to the light that's a little more interesting than that uh, would be would make for a good video today. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys, um, you know, want uh, in the comments below, list any other decks that you know can utilize frogs. Um, I just mentioned the top three there off the you know off the top of my head. I felt that those were the most represented ones, and I feel that they definitely will have potential in this upcoming format. But uh, let me know what you guys think. I personally like Paleozoics. That's just me. Um, nothing against Darkland, nothing against Mermails, you know, uh, you know, to each his own. If you're able to play them, play them. I think they're all just really good decks. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, what this format shapes up to be and what will happen with all these frog decks. But I think it's just cool that uh, they can be played. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. Let me know any other discussions you'd like to see. Give me your opinion on Tree Toad and frog decks in general, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.